What if I told you that the supplements that you use, whether that's a protein powder, vitamin or mineral tablet, something for joint pain, or literally whatever supplement that you can think of, didn't actually contain what you thought it did, or instead contained extra ingredients that weren't on the label? Well, that's a very real possibility and it's something which worries me, and it should worry you too. A recent study investigated some commonly purchased supplements and tested them to see what they contained. They found that only 43% contained the ingredients as they were listed. 43% had ingredients listed that weren't actually detected on analysis, and 30% had ingredients detected that weren't listed as ingredients. In some cases, people might not even be getting the ingredient that they're targeting, and in others, they might be consuming something that they don't even know about. Now, what supplements were they, and where did people buy them from? Well, they were products which were marketed to support or boost the immune system, and they were bought through Amazon, which I'm sure we can all agree is a reliable and reputable place to buy supplements from. Hold on. Amazon. Surely that's not the safest place to buy supplements from. And people don't actually do that, do they? So first up, yep, people absolutely do buy from Amazon. It's often cheap, convenient, with fast delivery to your house, and there'll be hundreds or thousands of customer reviews saying how great this product has been for them. And for many people, it just makes sense to buy it. But more importantly, this isn't just about Amazon, but about the supplement business and the regulation of it as a whole. I guarantee you that whether you're buying from Amazon, your local health store, or an online company that you trust, there will be similar risks involved with buying and using a supplement. I'm gonna tell you why this is so important for you and how you can reduce the risks. But first, let's explore how we even got to this point in the first place. The supplement industry is huge and extremely profitable for so many companies. There are supplements of all different kinds with marketing designed to target your fears, your pains and your desires. They know how to get you to buy their product and part with your hard-earned cash with the prospect of getting better by taking it. This might be getting stronger, fitter, losing weight or reducing joint pain. But the problem with the supplement industry is that it's not really regulated. In most countries, supplements fall under food law, which means the manufacturing and sale of a supplement doesn't have the same control as something like a medicine. But most people seem to think that supplements are tested based on excellent evidence and beneficial to health or performance, but in the majority of cases, this just isn't true. And whilst companies have to put nutritional data onto the labels, unless someone actually reports a product, there's no requirement to test and therefore verify what's actually in the supplement. Of course, not every supplement is a problem and some companies rigorously test their products themselves or get third party testing, but this isn't a standardized approach. Another problem is that lots of companies will outsource their supplement production, meaning their supplement will be created and packaged in a facility that is used for other supplements too. This means there's a risk of cross-contamination and no quality control to make sure that the supplement is exactly what it says it is. Now I work as a sports nutritionist and this is something which I really care about. In my mind, there are two big issues here and that's your health, and your risk of inadvertent doping in a sport that you love. You've only got one body, and I think it's important to know, as reasonably far as possible, what you're actually putting in it. Personally, I would want to know what I'm consuming, so supplements seem like a risky thing. It's also not uncommon for athletes to get banned from the sport that they love because of doping offenses, and yep, you've guessed it. This can definitely be innocent because someone has unknowingly taken something that they shouldn't. So how can you take supplements and know exactly what's in them? You can't. The honest truth is that you can never be completely sure what's in your supplement. So you need to be clear about the pros and cons of said supplement and understand the risks with taking it. In my mind, there are three questions that you should ask yourself here. Does it really have a good evidence base for it? When you actually look at the data, is there a strong body of evidence demonstrating a clear benefit of it? Is it something that can only be supplemented? Or if you just improved your diet, could you avoid the need for a supplement altogether? And is it really worth it? Even supplements with a good evidence base typically show performance benefits in the range of two to 3%. Is that enough of a difference to you? And have you optimized 
optimized everything else that you can, like your training, your sleep, and your nutrition. When all that's said and done, you might decide that it is worth it. And if so, fair enough. If possible, I would always suggest that you speak to someone like me who's a registered sports nutritionist, but I realized that might not always happen. But you do have to take responsibility for your choice, so remember that. You can use programs like Inform Sport to help reduce the risk of taking supplements. With programs like this, they batch test products for prohibited items, which reduces the risk of inadvertent doping. Look out for the Inform Sport logo on products that have been tested. There are also some apps that you can use to help you make better choices with what you buy. Your home nation might have its own app. For example, mine is UK Anti-Doping and their Clean Sport app. And there's info on here about lots of different sports and supplement guidance. And it's well worth looking at. Some of this might seem a bit scary, but it's important stuff. You could also use an app like Medicheck, which is super helpful. You can put in the medication contained in the product that you're using. So for example, let's go with cetirizine, which is an antihistamine which you could realistically be using. For example, if you had insect bites and they were driving you mad with itching. But let's also look at something like mimetazone, which is a steroid. As you can see, there's some more information here, like what's prohibited in or out of competition, what routes of administration, and also some extra parts like cautions and washout periods. Obviously, this isn't specifically related to supplements, but I think it's a really handy tip for you. The bottom line for me when it comes to supplements is that you need to properly consider it rather than it just being an offhand decision. Think about those three questions to help you weigh it up. If you decide to and you're involved in sport, then you need to keep a log of any supplements that you use, the batch numbers of the product, and any evidence that you read whilst making your decision. If anything ever went wrong, then you've got a record of what you've used and why, and this does need to include the research into why you're using this supplement. This is a world anti-doping requirement, by the way. Maybe not useful for everyone, but good to know. Now, protein shakes are a really common supplement that people use, and often it's because they think they need them to build muscle. And if you want to know the truth about this, then you should watch the video that I've put up on screen for you now.